You have the power. The series of lessons and meditations you are about to listen to were taped live during the Sunday morning service at the Unity Village Chapel, Unity Village, Missouri. The tapes present some basic unity concepts about the one presence and one power in our universe, God, and our use of God power in our lives. The first side contains a synthesis of some of the basic principles taught by unity, and the remaining sides cover application of these principles in daily living. Each lesson concludes with a brief meditation on the ideas presented in the lesson. This is Martha Judici, and I invite you to find a new realization of the God power within you and increase your ability to use your God power more effectively in your life. If someone told you that you have the power, what would be your response? Would you be surprised? Or would you be curious? Or would you strongly deny and say, who me? I have the power? I don't know what you mean. And yet, this is the truth, the absolute truth about you and about me, is that we have the power. And the goal of our very life expression is to express that power more fully, more freely than we ever had before. Quite a number of years ago, someone said to me, Martha, what is your credo? What is your credo? What is your most fundamental belief? What is your most fundamental belief? And without hesitation, I replied to them, you have the power. You have the power. Every man, every woman, every child in this universe has the power within them to do, to be, to accomplish anything that you may desire. And of course, those who know me very well know that I always follow that with the word now. I'm a now person, that you have the power now. So we're going to begin a series of four lessons this month in which we're going to talk about this power. We're going to talk about the power that is within us. We're going to share ideas about the power. We're going to explore all of the aspects of our power, what it is, how it manifests in our life, how we can use it, how we can use it more effectively to release anything that needs to be released, to overcome any challenge that we may be experiencing in life, and then to accomplish to accomplish whatever we want to accomplish and to become anything that we may desire to become. You have the power. And as I said, you have it now. The very first thing that we have to recognize is that the power is within us. That it's not something that we have to go out and look for. It's not something that we have to search all over the world for. For that power is the very essence, the very nature of our being. It is the very reality that is within you, that is within me. The reality. That which always has been, that which ever shall be. Within each and every person in this universe, in this universe, is really an expression of power. It is our potential to accomplish anything we want to accomplish. It is to help us and be with us as the creative power to conceive, shape, and form anything in our life that we desire to. 
It is ours to use at all times to create an abundant life, an abundant life, a life filled with every good. It is ours to use to create an atmosphere of loving relationships, relationships that are fulfilling to us. It is our power to live healthfully, vitally, alive, right here, right now, right here and right now. So we are all a part of the expression of that one power. But, of course, if we're going to be an expression of power, then we really need to know its source. We really need to know the source of the power. Where do we get this power? Where does it come from? What is the source of the power that we are even now using at all times? Well, we began our morning by expressing the very foundation principle of unity. And the foundation principle of unity says that there is but one presence and one power in the universe. God, the good. Omnipotence. Omnipotence. And that omnipotence is omnipresent, everywhere present in the universe. There is no place where God is not. Therefore, if there is no place where God is not, there is no place where the power is not. The power is everywhere present in the universe. So the source of our power is God. It is God absolute good. God absolute good. Now you know that word absolute good is a word that people say, well, why do you say absolute good? Well, we say it because when we're talking about God, we're talking about absolute, and an absolute has nothing that stands in opposition to it. In other words, an absolute says that there is nothing but good and God in the universe. If we feel that there is more than one power, if we feel that there is one more than one presence in the universe, then we have what is known as duality. And duality is an illusion. Duality is an illusion that we have created in our thinking and our thought to explain our misuse of the power to explain our misuse of the power. Because we have the power within us, and that power is absolute good, and nothing stands in opposition to it. Charles Fillmore, time and time again in his writings, wrote this statement that God primal cause is good. The prophets have always said this. Isaiah said that there is but one presence and one power when he said, I am God, there is none else. For prophets speak for God. Prophets before and after say, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one. And so we need to get that awareness that there is but one presence, one power, everywhere present in the universe, and that presence is absolute good. So therefore, each and every one of us has a power, an expression of good within us that we can use to accomplish anything that we want to. Of course, we say, okay, we have the power. But how do we gain the use of that power? How do we gain the use of that power? A couple of religious leaders were talking about God and the power and one of them said that the power of God formed all creation, that God made everything. And the second religious leader said, no, God was very wise. He made things make themselves. He made things make themselves. And how did God accomplish this? God accomplished this by individualizing himself in the universe and in man as the Christ, as the Christ. 
And this is our source of power within us individually, having its origin in God. Out of God came this creative power, the Christ. And the Christ is our power to do, to be, to make our own world, to make our own world through us, through us. And, of course, we think about that and we say, well, is this just something that happens? Is it something that happens? No, because God understood that in order to make sure or ensure that we were using the power correctly, that it would work according to law that it would work according to a law, a law that was always operating in the universe at every level. And the law, of course, is the law of mind action. First, out of the mind of God came pure potential, creativity, this idea of the Christ. And then the Christ, which is creativity, brought forth creation, mind action and manifestation, mind and manifestation. For the law that is operating everywhere in the universe says that the thoughts that we are holding in our mind are producing after their kind, are producing our world. We often use this and we say, as in mind, so in manifestation. As in heaven, so in earth. Heaven being the mind, Earth being the manifestation, heaven being creativity, earth being creation. So we are using this power. We're using this power and we're using it through the law. And if you will note, we have been given the tools. We've been given the tools with which to manifest our world, to make our world, and that is our thoughts. And our thoughts are always coupled with the idea of a word, the thought word. For no matter whether we are speaking it audibly or inaudibly, we are always forming our thoughts and they become the word. Even as in the beginning, the word of God expressed in the universe all creativity, so too do we, through the power of the Christ within us, bring forth our world. We make our own world through the power, through the thought word, in thought union with that which is the true source of power within us. You know, that thought word that we are always speaking transfers the power from the invisible realm from the invisible realm to the visible realm, from the invisible to the visible, from pure potential to expressed or manifest. And that's what we're doing at all times. We are shaping and forming and co-creating our world through the power of our thought word. And of course, we have the choice we have been given dominion over the thoughts that we will hold in our mind to determine what that world is going to be expressed, how we're going to use the power to express in our world. And of course, if we want to learn how to use the power more effectively, then we have to find out what is that power like? What is that power like? What is this power that we're using and, of course, Charles Fillmore said that the power has the one presence, the one power. The Christ individualized in the universe and man has essential attributes, essential attributes. Now, that doesn't mean that there are just parts of this one. It means that there are essential attributes, our functionings, our abilities within the one that we perceive. We are always looking at the one and saying, oh... I see the one doing this. I see the one operating as that, functioning in man and in the universe. And so he said that there are 12 essential attributes, 12 essential attributes in this one 
mind, this one presence, this one power. And these 12 essential attributes he called the 12 powers of the Christ. The 12 powers of the Christ mind and also the 12 powers of man. Because you and I are right now using these powers to create our world. But we are only using a minor portion of the power within us. We have these ideas within us, and they're called divine ideas, and they're our birthright. They're our creative birthright. The 12 divine ideas, the 12 attributes of the Christ mind. And of course, we need to know exactly what it is that they do and how they operate in our world. And of course, we have to realize that the very essence is that there is the power itself. The power itself. Our potential. Our potential to transfer all the power that is God from the invisible to the visible. Our power, our potential to express the allness of the Christ. And there is faith. That radiant living substance of the universe, that radiant living substance of the universe, which we are investing at all times and using to create this world. And then, of course, in order to do that, we have to have the power to make a decision. We have to have the will, the will to decide to do or not to do, or not do. And we spoke of an attribute when we spoke of the law, the law of mind action. And this is an attribute of the Christ mind for everything in the universe works according to law. And so we are subject to the law. And we also have a formative power, a formative power. We have the ability to shape and form the thoughts of our mind so that they come forth after their kind in the world. Another attribute of the power is our ability to know, to understand, to tap into infinite intelligence and to make right judgments, to make and select those things and give value to those things in our life which are going to express the highest form of this power. And of course, we need an attribute that allows us to let go, to release those things, to dissolve those things which we have created, which are less than the highest expression of that power. And so we have the power to eliminate, to give up, give out, and give way to the presence and power of God within us. And of course, as we give way, we find that we have this drive, this impulse within us, which is our zeal, our zeal for living, our zeal to express the power in every way. And of course we have the strength. The strength to endure and persist and to keep on keeping on expressing the powers. We have life. We are alive. We are alive with the power of life. We are enlivened by the power of life. We are activated by this power within us. And we are love. For we have that ability to draw, to attract all things together into a universal, harmonious unity. And so we have the power. We are now using it unconsciously. We're using it unconsciously, but there is a greater potential, a greater expression and experience of that power to be expressed by you and by me. You know, we don't think that we're using the power, but every thought word, every act that we perform is an expression of our use of the power. And we have created a world, a world that expresses this. But every once in a while, we find in our world people who are unconsciously using the greater potential that is within them to accomplish things more easily, more clearly, and in what might be called miraculous ways. Miraculous ways. 
Very recently, in the October 31st Kansas City Star, there was a story I'm sure many of you read about the man who lifted an 1,800-pound pipe to rescue a five-year-old boy. Now, this man had a heart condition, and he wasn't supposed to be lifting things, but he came upon this child who was caught under a pipe. The child had been playing on the pipes near a playground, and he was pinned under the pipe, and without thinking, the man walked over and lifted the pipe. And he thought, well, it was heavy. And the little girls who were close at hand draw the little boy out from under. And the man went back later, and you know he couldn't even budge the pipe. He couldn't even budge it because it weighed 1,800 pounds. But without thinking, he had drawn upon the power that was within him to lift it, to lift it. He called upon the power in all its magnificence to help him accomplish something at that particular time. When I was a youngster growing up, there was a lady who lived next door to us, and her name was Mrs. Mims. And Mrs. Mims and son and my uh, cousin were playing in the attic one day. And she was down in the kitchen. And while she was in the kitchen, all of a sudden she heard this terrible rumbling and the house began to shake. And she heard this loud crash. And she knew that something had happened upstairs, so she rushed up. And when she rushed up, she found that the boys who had been playing in the attic were caught under the roof which had collapsed. The roof had collapsed. Now, Mrs. Mims was no bigger than I am. And yet, in that moment, she rushed in and, without thinking, lifted the beam and pushed back the roof. And the two boys were able to get out from under. Did she have special powers that no one else has? No. She was merely drawing upon the power within her at that particular moment. People do this unconsciously. One morning in church services, one of our people was sitting there listening to the service, and he heard those words that you are the Christ, the Son of the living God, and that nothing can keep you in bondage. And without realizing what was happening, he felt something moving through him. And he realized in that moment that he had experienced a healing. That he had experienced a healing of a lifelong disease. And he went to have it checked out with his physician because the physician had been prescribing for him. And he just knew in the depths of his being that he had been healed, and he was. The physician confirmed the healing. He was using the power of life and wholeness from within him, and he tapped into it, and he was healed. Even in a more simple way, a friend of mine's husband was sitting one day and had some images coming before his mind, and he began to realize that what he was seeing before his mind was a way to change the whole structure of the store in which he was working for a better layout, a more convenient layout, a more convenient layout in that store. And he went in and he suggested it to management. And the idea was so good that it created an effective, efficient way for the store to operate. And the young man was given the managership of a new store that was opening, even though he had only been with the company for a very short time, because they recognized that if he had this ability to use his creative imagination, the power within him, that he could accomplish great things. And he did. And he did. But he was using the power unconsciously. He just thought that the thoughts had come to him, but he was tapping in to creative imagination. And of course, you can't go along using this type of power without experiencing it yourself. 
And I think of the time, for me, that I was using the power and didn't even realize it when I was a youngster. Every day after school, we cut through a field on our way home. On our way home from school, there was this field, which was a shortcut, really. But as you know, fields in Missouri often get rutted with rain. You know, they're just kind of big gullies all the way through a field. And so as I was coming down the path toward these gullies, and every day there was one particular gully that I would try to jump across and could never make it. I would always land down in it and, you know, have to scramble up the other side. But this particular day, as I was going down the path, all of a sudden, a blue racer, a snake, crossed my path and I took off running. And guess what? I cleared that gully with feet to spare. So where did I get the power? Where did I get that sudden surge of energy that enabled me to clear that gully without any difficulty? It was always there. It was always there. Jesus the Christ said to his disciples that all power has been given me in heaven and earth. And he said to all people, the things that I can do you can do. And greater things than these can you do. Was he telling the truth? Of course he was, because he knew that all power was in the heaven of our mind to create in the earth of manifestation anything we wanted to. Anything we wanted to. All power. And that because he could do it, we could do it. So all power has been given to you, to me, in the heaven of our mind to create whatever we desire in the earth of our manifestation. We all have the power to release any condition, to overcome any challenge in our life, to accomplish anything that we want to, and to become what we desire. And during our next lessons together, our time together, we're going to have lessons concerning how we can do this, how we can use the power to accomplish and do and be. So the truth, my friends, is that you have the power, the potential to express our true goal, the fullness, the allness of the Christ, the Christ power, the God power that is in you and in me. We're going to take time now to experience that power in a time of meditation. For the only true way that we can experience the power is in thought union with the power itself and the powers within us. And we find that within of us by meditating. This is the quickest and easiest way, and then once we have acquired that ability, we can tap in at any time. So I invite you now to find a comfortable position in your chair. Relax into the chair. Just relax into it. Let it support you. And then with your hands free of anything that might distract you, find a comfortable position for your hands. And now, just become aware of your breathing, the breathing in and the breathing out. You breathe in that pure essence, that pure power, which is everywhere present in the universe. And you can breathe out all discomfort, dis-ease. So feel yourself breathing in that pure power and breathing out 
all tension, all stress. Just gather it with your thought and breathe it out. For even as the great thought word of breath and breath of God brought forth the pure potential of our universe, so too do we experience and express more of that power in our thought, in our word, in our breath, as we breathe rhythmically and easily. And then we let our thought flow gently inward until it comes to a quiet place of rest within us. And we find that at the very center of our being there is a calm, there is a peace, There is a power. And that power within us is God power. Individualized in you, in me, as the Christ. The allness of God power, good power, power to create, power to accomplish, power to release, dissolve, let go. of anything that may block the flow of the presence and power of the one in us. So I would invite you now to sense, to feel, to know, to experience the power that is within you. to know that it is good, very good, good that far surpasses anything that you may have experienced or expressed. And it is within you. It is now. It always has been, and it ever shall be. For you cannot be separated from the one, from the power of the Christ in you. So relax, let go. And let the power begin to flow through you, right where you are, just as you are. And as you feel that power moving through you, in you, as you, begin to realize that you have been given all power in the heaven of your mind to create 
and manifest your own world. How wonderful, how marvelous, how glorious to know you have the power and that if you have accepted less than the highest and the best, then you have the power to change it. So I would invite you now to begin to look at your world, your body, your own mind, your life experiences, your life environment, that which surrounds you. And begin to know that I have the power. Know with me, I have the power. I have the power right now to begin to change that. And I change it in my thought world, in the heaven of my mind. And so I invite you now to begin to see the possibility right now of using the power in your thought to change your world. and begin to create in mind the activity of dissolving, releasing, and letting go of the lesser good and building for yourself a new reality that expresses peace of mind, light and illumination, health in your body, alive as never before, love and fulfillment in all of your life experiences and creating an environment which is worthy of an expression of God. Take a moment in the quiet. in that moment of stillness you have tapped in to the power and that which you have begun to create in your mind shall be forthcoming and as we gently and easily bring our time of meditation to a close, we know that we have the power and we are going to use it more creatively in our world. For the law is, as in mind, so in manifestation, as in heaven, so in earth. And this new awareness of power has been established within us and it shall be manifest in our world. 
This we do affirm in the name and through the power of the living, loving presence of the Christ. And to this we do say, Amen.